Learning. Um, with Eddie Chambers, just after the press conference, Eddie, you were one armed man, like from the movie. Yes. And then you said that if you would have two hands, you will beat Tom Agata McGeasley. Uh, tell us why. Well, I, I think I just had a little bit too much, you know, in the skill department. And boxing is about skills and uh, different techniques and things you work on. And um, I just think I had more of that than he. Even though he's like a, he's a very good fighter, top one of the top fighters in the division. I believe I'm one of the top three fighters in the division, and that include and that obviously includes um, the titleist. So obviously you disagree with the unanimous decision. I, I, I mean, uh, like I said, I would have felt a bit better if you know the fight would have been closer for him. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I, I want I, th I wanted to win the fight, and as hard as I worked and what I really you know. I tried so much. There's a lot of a lot I did in that ring. You know what I mean? A lot uh, that I worked on beforehand, and when I got in there, I just gave it everything. Even though I had one arm, you know what I mean? I thought in certain instances in there that I may have taken the decision, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't go your way. Tell us when you realized you basically will have to uh, put the most damage with just one right hand. When when it happened? First, second round? I think uh, I saw the muscle probably in the first round. No way when you do that. Anyway, um, but uh, I thought, I, and, and after I tore the, the muscle in the first round, at that point it was just you know free a free fall. Even though when uh, my my trainer James Ali Basher still was you know giving me different ideas in the corner of what to do, and I tried some of them, but it was really hard. And when you practice certain things and you have certain ideas, and and, and when you go in plan planning for the fight, going into into the fight, and you know one of your main weapons goes under. Yeah. It's very difficult to... Uh, Tomek said that you were a very difficult fighter to fight, very elusive fighter. It was very hard to predict what you're going to do next, uh, which is basically your trademark for forever. You are unpredictable, unpredictable fighter. But he got the good moments. When he was going forward, uh, it looked like he felt better as a fighter and you got some problems uh, when you had to defend yourself. Would you agree or disagree? Well, I mean, I don't think about the defending myself part. I, I thought, I, I thought for the most part, beside the 12th round, he couldn't land any, he couldn't mount any significant attack. There was just nothing he could really touch. Um, but you know, like I said, I couldn't do the Willie Pep thing. You know what I mean? Went around with no punches, so I tried to punch it. And <laughs> sometimes doing that, you know, you Willie Pep punches. reference. Right, right. <laughs> One of the greatest fighters ever, and you know. I don't want to put myself in the same conversation, but I tried. I, I really tried to do some things to, uh, uh, you know, upset it and, you know, just maybe didn't go my way this one. But please say something good about Tom Agata. Oh, I mean, no, he won. No, he there won. must be some reason why, why three look, judges look, look, decided. Look. Yeah. Make no mistake. Like no. I said, he's one of the better fighters in the division. There's no question about that. Very tough. You know, I mean, I've landed better. I, I've landed very difficult shot, uh, very hard shots for, for people to take, some ones he didn't see, and he kept coming and he kept trying. He's a very good fighter. I'm not trying to put him down in any way, and I'm not that kind of guy. Everybody knows me as a fighter. I don't tear any, any other fighter down. And he was a very, very tough guy. I'm just stating the obvious facts in certain areas of, of, of the skill levels and things like that. But he is a t he's one heck of a fighter, one hell of a fighter. I'm sorry to curse, but one hell of a fighter. You guys are both very, you know, great fighters fighting with the big injuries because he got, Tomek got asked, one of the questions was about your injury. And Tomek said, I won the WBC championship fighting with a broken nose. So right now you have a one guy who fought Win, won the championship with the broken nose, and you fought great 12 rounds with the, with the problem with your left hand. Let me say something. If I had a broken nose, that is that may affect you pain a little, but come on. And now don't get me wrong, I mean, Tomas, like I said, he's a very tough guy. And even me hitting him with them shots. And, look, if I had a broken nose and that was the only problem, trust me what would happen in this fight, y'all know. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not a brass, like I said, but if I had both arms and a broken nose, I'll take that any day over, over what I had this fight. Uh, Eddie Chambers, live, one and only, as you, as you can see after 12 rounds with one hand, uh, lost to Tom Agadamek, but we all hope to see uh, Eddie as soon as possible. Hopefully nothing will happen. The last question I promise you, okay. uh, Coach, will not be longer than this. You were the Iron Man for so long. What happens in the last 10 months? I don't understand it. I mean, you know, 
I'm thinking maybe I'm working too hard, but then I don't think that's the case because I did it smarter this time. I think it's just a case of bad luck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I said, I, I've done so much work and practice and trained and done everything right. And, you know, I live my life right. I've done all, almost everything I possibly could do the right way. And, um, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out in your favor. Thank you very much. You've been a great fighter and a gracious host. Thank you. Thank you.